Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year! Um, it sounds a bit crazy saying that because we're basically at the end of February but this is the first one of the year so happy 2022! If you're new here my name is Massa and today I'm going to be telling you about some of the major mistakes that I made when I was setting up my wax melt business so hopefully you can avoid them. Just to start by saying that I set up my wax melt business technically in October slash November of 2020. This was when we were in second lockdown I've lost track of the lockdowns but I think we were in second lockdown and I lost my all my acting jobs went absolutely out of the window when we went into the lockdown the theatre industry disappeared nothing was happening and I needed to find something to have an income with so I thought I've got some savings why don't I set up my own business and wax melts seem to be very on trend so that's how I went with it. This leads me into my first mistake. Do a lot of research. I thought I'd done a whole bunch of research and it turned out that I hadn't done even close to enough research. So when I was first starting out, initially I wanted to do candles and then I really quickly realised that candle testing is such a huge thing that you need to do and it takes a really long time and I really wanted to launch for Christmas or before Christmas of 2020 so that I had some sort of income from the Christmas rush. And that's how I ended up settling on going with wax melts. So I figured that I would do the wax melts, have some sort of income coming in, and then I would do my candles. Now, initially, the kinds of candles that I wanted to do were really cute sort of like food and drink inspired ones where they were in like cool glasses and then they had whipped wax on top. I'll put some photos on somewhere around here so you guys can see the sorts of things that I was really into and then I saw the ones with dried flowers and crystals in them and all of that. They are absolutely gorgeous and in my head I thought yeah, this is the kinds of candles I want to do. They're beautiful to look at. They're really nice and decorative. They're highly scented and they're going to be amazing. So I started with my wax melt with that vision in mind, thinking that that's how it was going to go. I could see that other people online were getting quite a few sales. These were the candles that were on trend and I was seeing them everywhere. So I thought that they would be amazing and they'd be a massive hit. Fast forward a little bit to mid me doing the wax melts for the Christmas of 2020 and I started to join more Facebook candle groups and do more research, learning more about the rules and regulations and it very quickly became clear that those sorts of candles were actually not okay at all whatsoever. Now you might be thinking, Okay, but there's a lot of places who are selling these sorts of candles and they seem to be doing super well and yes, there are. However, the EU and the UK has something called the Food Regulation Act. This is a very rough explanation. Basically, you can't make candles or wax melts that look like food because if a child then eats that or especially if it smells like the food as well as looking like the food, if someone eats that or takes a bite out of it or does anything like that, you're basically screwed is the really easy, simple way of looking at it. So I very quickly realised that, oh, well, these sorts of candles, I'm not going to be able to do them because they're like super against the law. You are still getting people who are selling these and trading standards will catch up with them eventually. The thing is that in the US, there are far, far, far fewer laws and regulations when it comes to candles and wax melts and safety labels and all of that good stuff. So 
it is a lot easier for people in America and a lot of like the US candle makers that I've seen do make candles like that and it's perfectly fine for them to do whereas over here it's sort of a bit against the law. So upon realising that oh I can't make these candles I thought okay well the ones with crystals in them and like dried flowers they look really cool they look really like jazzy and reading further this is where more research comes in reading further about that I was like oh actually a lot of the very established candle makers are against that sort of thing because the second that you put a foreign object into a candle you are basically making it pretty unpredictable and a lot of them will come with safety warnings saying you should remove the crystal before you light the candle but you can honestly never trust your customers to follow the instructions. Always be prepared that someone out there isn't going to follow the instructions and that is why we have insurance because someone somewhere will not read the instructions. So the crystals could heat up or explode or do anything along those lines. The dried flowers could act as a secondary wick and if they catch fire then that can increase the temperature of your candle and the glass could shatter and all sorts of horrific things could happen. There's been many videos online where it's just absolutely bonkers. So that ended up leading to me being a bit stuck because the sorts of candles that I wanted to do I couldn't do and it took a really long time to sort of figure out the sorts of candles that I then wanted to end up doing and I'm currently in the process of testing those and getting candles out alongside wax melts. So the second mistake I made and possibly the most important mistake I made was that I spent way too much money starting this business. So when I was starting out I had it in my head that you had to spend money to make money which you need to spend some money but you don't need to spend the amount of money that I spent. So I made the huge error of practically emptying out the little savings that I had and spending it all on um, this business because I thought that's what I had to do. And what people don't tell you is that wax melt supplies or candle supplies and all of that stuff is actually really quite expensive like it adds up very quickly if you are buying in bulk it does work out cheaper but who's buying in bulk when they're first starting out you shouldn't do that because you don't know what's going to work and what isn't and one of the reasons that I ended up spending a bunch of money was that I launched just before Christmas and when I first launched I had a bunch of interest and people were buying stuff and I got really scared that I was going to sell out before Christmas and I was like I can't do that so I ended up ordering um, large quantities so I think I got a few kilogram bottles of fragrance oils of Christmas fragrance oils I I think I just really panicked so I bought a whole bunch of things because I thought that I needed them and a lot of them didn't get used which is just money that I've wasted. Now yes I can use the fragrance oils going forward and a bunch of them aren't open so they're absolutely fine to continue using but it's still money that I spent which I haven't made any money from that yet. The third mistake sort of or thing that I wish I'd done differently is my pricing. Now when you're starting out everything is very expensive. So because you're not buying massive quantities of things, everything is very expensive. And you don't want your items, so if you're selling one snap bar, you don't want that to cost a lot because people aren't going to buy that. But it is very frustrating for small businesses because our prices are always going to be much higher than, let's say, Aldi, who are selling their I think they're selling their wax melts for maybe like a pound or something which it cost me I think more than a pound to make one snack bar so how are they possibly selling it for a pound and making a profit and it's because they buy in huge amounts of bulk or whoever makes those wax melts I'm not sure if it'll actually be them 
but whoever's making those wax melts is buying in massive bulk amounts so the cost price actually ends up coming right down. So at the beginning I didn't have my prices high enough so as a rule you take how much it costs for you to make the item and this should be including your time and like bills and stuff like that you break it down you take how much it costs you to make the item and you times that by two for wholesale prices and you well you are meant to times it by four to get your selling price which you are meant to then sell to the public and that blows my mind because I know that if I was timesing by four on my wax melts then no one would buy them. I probably wouldn't spend that much on wax melts if I was buying them myself so it's just it's a fine balance between making enough of a profit so that you can keep going and actually make the money that you need to to pay your bills and do all that stuff and pricing it so that it's still a little bit competitive with everyone else. So I wish I'd really focus more on pricing and learning more about pricing and not starting too low and then being like oh well actually I'm making very little profit from this to the point where it's almost not worthwhile. So the fourth thing I wish I had done differently is building up an audience before I actually launched the website. And by this I mean I really wish that I had spent more time on social media, showed more of the behind the scenes and built up more of an audience so that there would be more hype and buzz about it when I initially launched rather than doing a few posts about it and then being like whoop I'm live now and then expecting loads of people to know about it when I hadn't spent time building up that audience so that they would be ready for when I launched. So I wish I had spent more time doing that. I wished that I had used different social media platforms also because I didn't actually open a TikTok for the business until way down the line. And I think TikTok, because at that time it was just becoming huge, I think that would have been a really useful asset to have and a really useful social media platform to be on for building up little businesses and I am kicking myself in the butt for not doing that when I launched. And the fifth thing I wish I had done differently, and this is kind of a big one for me, is I wish I hadn't compared myself so much with other brands. Hear me out, I know we're always going to be comparing ourselves to other brands but at the time a bunch of the ones that I was following had ended up going viral on I think it was TikTok and going viral on different social media platforms and there isn't huge amounts of difference for wax melts like at the end of the day it is wax melts we all pretty much get our oils from very similar suppliers so there isn't huge amounts of difference so when you see someone selling thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds in the same period of time where you sold like a fraction of that it can be really disheartening because it feels like what's the point if they're making that much and you're making next to nothing then what is the point of carrying on and what is the point of continuing this but it's really important to focus on your brand focus on like what is your unique selling point what is your usp what makes your products really unique and what does your audience want i think if i had focused more on that focused more on consistency and showing my face on social media every day and just being more consistent with what I was putting out, making sure that my products were top quality and working more on the brand and the products and making those better rather than being really disheartened that I wasn't making the sorts of sales that other brands were. I think that would have really helped me in the beginning and it probably would have meant that I wouldn't have been so gutted basically that I wouldn't have been so upset that I wasn't making anywhere near what they were. 
So they are my top five mistakes slash things I wish I'd done differently when I first started my wax melt business. I really hope that that helps you guys and that I'm desperately trying to make everyone avoid the mistakes that I made when I was starting but everyone makes mistakes at the beginning, it's how you learn, it's how I ended up learning and some of the mistakes I still kick myself about like spending all of my savings on a small business in the middle of a pandemic but we're not going to focus on that, we're focusing on the future. Um, so I hope you learned something from this. So let me know if you found this helpful, let me know if you are thinking of starting a business maybe or let me know if you have already started a small business or a small wax melt or candle business and what was the biggest mistake that you think you made at the beginning. Mine will always and forever be the money thing but we're moving past it. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it and found it useful give it a massive thumbs up leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next week for a brand new video. Bye!